glory, honor, and praise. Let God forever be magnified. Amen. Let his name be praised. Let our lips sing your praises forever. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for the spirit of adoption. Thank you for the spirit of sonship. Thank you for the priesthood. Thank you for making our joint hers. Thank you for salvation. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. But uh, before we go into what we have for the day, just a few tips about Thanksgiving. When the prayer started, it was with thanksgiving. It was to show that we must give thanks to the Lord. Then in the process of worship, is to praise, to praise the holy name of our Lord. To exalt him and to give him thanks. Brethren, let's continue in thanksgiving. In thanksgiving to our Lord. What that does is to immediately acknowledge what Jehovah has done. Amen. Amen. Thank God whether you see it or not. You know what I mean? Whether it happens or not, give God thanks because it must happen. That's the counsel. That's the mind of God for you and I. In Psalm 92 verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. It says it is a good thing. It is good. If you want to do good things in your day, give thanks. Give thanks to the Almighty. It is a good thing. That's the scripture. Hallelujah. Now, in verse 2, it says, To show forth thy loving kindness. As you give thanks, what shows forth, what unveils, is the loving kindness of our great God. Amen. His love to you. You will in no shape or form feel short change in the love of God. It will be a common reality in your life, the love of the Father. Many commit suicide. Many uh, feel very uncomfortable because they fall short. They seem to fall short of the loving kindness of our great God. But one thing is sure, God loves you. And once you praise him, it unveils his loving kindness in the morning. Then, and thy faithfulness every night when it's dark. His faithfulness shows up. Why? Because you give thanks. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. Psalm 50 verse 23. Just the importance of thanksgiving. Yesterday we saw this. He says in verse 23, Whoso offereth praise, who, whosoever offereth praise glorified me. Now, you think it's an easy thing to glorify God? It's so easy. God makes it so easy. Just praise Him. You glorify Him. Glorify Him. What does it mean to glorify? You know, it's, it means kabad. Hallelujah. Amen. It means to make rich. To be wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen. To make heaven. In the name of Jesus, to be honored, who so offereth praise glorified me. Now, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, 
will I show the salvation of God. So, as you offer praise, let our lifestyle be a life of praise to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when we are praising God here, please do nothing else. Do nothing else. Whether you are the equipment, whether you are here, praise the Lord. Let your lips praise the name of the Lord. Or whether you are sitting down there, praise Him. Because whosoever offereth praise does what? Glorify me. That glory goes to Jehovah. And to Him that orders His conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. May God show you His salvation every day. The fullness of light. The word comes and delivers you. We live in a, 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 a terrible world. God didn't make it so. But man had decided to make the world look like this. But he that order it, you must order your conversation. Speak to your conversation. Your conduct. Your conduct, your conduct, your speech, you speak to it, are right. You must do it right in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will I show? God says he will show you what? His salvation. Look, don't limit God's salvation. Salvation is, is pure, is simple, is glorious, is deliverance from darkness, is freedom. And that leads us into what we are going to be discussing today in continuation of what we discussed before I, uh, I was away, that was rest. Amen. Amen. Psalm 103 verse 5. Psalm 103 verse 5. Praise the name of the Lord. 103 verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? Remember, he says it is a good thing to give thanks. So what's the good thing? Thanksgiving. Who satisfies thy mouth what? with good things? And what is thanksgiving? You give him thanks because of what he has done. You give him thanks for what you know of him and what you've received of him, even though you have it, whether you have it or not. Once you give thanks, it means it is coming. Sure, as daylight comes, as there must be daylight tomorrow, it will surely come. Because you give thanks. Who satisfied thy mouth? One, there will be satisfaction Amen. in your mouth. With what? Good things. And thy youth is renewed, what? Like the eagles. Because your mouth speaks good things. Your youth is renewed. Health. Grace. Dominion. Fulfillment of prophecy upon your life. The prophetic word. Moving in the dimension that God has called you. The opening of the heavens to you. He satisfied your mouth. You must speak it out. With good things. So that your youth, in the name of Jesus, in this body, whether you are listening to me online or not, know assuredly that your youth will be renewed, what? Like the eagles. Like the eagles. Because of what? What is in your mouth? Good things. Good things is in your mouth. Learn to praise God. So when we come here to praise God, let it be that you praise God. Amen. Let it be that you indeed worship. Amen. Don't be distracted by anything because we're coming here to praise God. Mm. Give him all your shots. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. But what said it in Psalm in Romans 10:8? What is in your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's nigh thee. It's with thee. It's in your mouth. And it says, it's the word of faith. Amen. Which we preach. So this word, 
is a word of faith. When you speak it, it will generate faith. Amen. It will whether you believe it or not, speak it. You may not you may speak it, speak it. It will look like idle words to you. Speak it. Amen. When the time comes, as the spirit of God broods over your water, you will quicken that word. Because he spoke it to me. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. He says, Let no corrupt word proceed from your mouth. Let no, I read it yesterday, I looked, let no corrupt word. Check your, check your past week. Have you spoken any corrupt word? Let is a law. Let no corrupt word proceed from your mouth. But rather, what is good, what is good, say, Lord, shaping me to speak only what is good. For the use of building up, when you speak Jesus, when you speak his word, what is he used to do? To build up. It builds you. It builds your hearer. It builds the environment around you. Hallelujah! So that it may confer a benefit on So, I am one who comes with benefit. I'm loaded with benefits from on high. And when I speak it, I confer benefit. Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord. Let God be magnified. Now we're going to the word for today. Lord, we bless your name. We receive your word with thanksgiving. As we look into your rest, Help us, help us, help us to enjoy the rest of the Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, I was struggling to title it, but let's continue with what we listened to two weeks ago. And um, that was from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Hebrews 4. From verse 1. It says, let us. So, let's decide together. Let us, therefore, fear. Lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. That's not going to be our lot. In the name of Jesus. We have people pressing on unto the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. For unto us was the gospel preached. The gospel is preached to you and to me as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Now, for we which have believed do enter into rest. And that's where we are going to. Because you have believed. You have done what? Entered into rest. But do you really believe it? Yes, you should believe it. Because the word of the Lord says it. Because you have believed. You have entered into rest. We need rest because this world is a place of turbulence. We need rest because we need to overcome. We need rest because Jesus himself is rest. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I will give you rest. He said, learn of me. Learn of me. When you come, that's what we are doing here. We are learning of Jesus. There's no other thing we learn of but Jesus. Learn of me. Hallelujah. Learn of me. Amen. Say, my yoke is easy and my body is light. So you must make it a duty to learn of Jesus. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give, it's a sure word, I will give rest. Now, he says, for we which have believed do enter into rest. The moment you believe you've entered into Christ, and Christ is in you, and please, let's allow Christ to do his work in us. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. If it's not so, it's going to be a little bit more turbulent. I'm not going to stay on that, you know, so that we move fast. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 14, it says, Now, why the turbulence? Follow peace with all men. Follow peace. You must be determined to live a life of peace. Because it's the God of peace that will crush Satan under your foot shortly. Satan is under our feet because we are coming to rest. Because Jesus defeated him on the cross of Calvary and gave us the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace and holiness. Peace and holiness. Let your life be devoid of trouble. Peace and holiness. Now, he says in verse 15, looking diligently, so we must be determined. It must be um, something we initiate ourselves. Looking diligently, lest any man fail. There's the possibility for some man to fail. Not you and I. The word you hear will transform you as you respond to the word. Fill of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defied. You are in control of your environment. You are in control of yourself by reason of the word you receiving the uh, the, the engrafted word of truth with meekness, with control. When you allow the word of God to do its job in your life or my life, you know what? I will not fail of the grace of God. Amen. There will be no, I'm not even talking of bitterness, the root of it. The root. So if you are bitter for anything, whether bitter against God or bitter against a neighbor or bitter against a sister or brother, just repent now if you want to move forward. Springing up trouble, springing up trouble you. You see, it gives trouble. It takes away rest. Thereby, you know what? That person doesn't go down alone. He begins to infect others. Thereby, many be defied. Then in verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. Some key things here. As we proceed in this journey, the essence of the journey is the blessing. Go check Abraham. There's no time. Abraham. Who became Abraham? That was, he's saying, blessing, I blessed, I blessed you. Now, the blessing of God, let it make it abundantly clear by reason of the word, is not material. The blessing of God is not material. It's not cars. It's not houses. Because those are the things the Gentiles seek. And those things will pursue you. That's the law. That is not what we are to seek. Some people have three cars, four cars, two houses, and say, God has blessed me. Fine. You worked hard. You worked hard. Because the man who doesn't even believe in God... He walks out and he gets those things. What's the difference? So the blessing.
blessings of God are not material. They are not. Once you remove, you have that mindset that the blessing of God is spiritual, then you can shape in your course, understand this road, and know the Jesus you are serving. That doesn't mean God is not going to bless you. He said, he said seek ye first. The priority to seek in this life is first what? The kingdom of God. Then he said, all other things will be what? Are dead. They will come as additions. They are not things we seek. They come as what? Additions. When God called Abraham, Abraham had money. He was rich. His neighbors were rich. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, these were rich persons. But that was not their calling. Their calling was not to be rich in, in material things. Those things were additions. Confirmation that I'm with you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, what is the blessing? We won't have time to go into it. Now, it was the blessing that... Um, Esau lost. He says, how did he lose it? He said, he sold his birthright. Then he said, for ye, in 17, for ye now know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. So two things. Birthright and blessing. The birthright is what you must fight for. Your birthright. The birthright comes with as surely as you have the birthright, you must have the blessing. The blessing follows your acknowledgement of your birthright in Christ. Hallelujah. So read that 17 again. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. So the blessing is for us to inherit. But we already have it. It needs to be unveiled. Can you put uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse, I think from verse 14 to 16. Let's watch it here. Uh, Paul was writing and profited in the Jews religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceeding zealous now Raphael was talking in the morning about zealousness Ex exceeding zealous of the traditions of my fathers but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to do what? To reveal his son in me. That's the blessing. The son of God must be revealed in me. That I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confide not with flesh and blood. Now, note this. The essence of your call is what? To reveal Jesus in us. Yes. That's the, the, the essence of our calling. And you must know of your birthright to inherit the blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. We will not go into many details about the birthright, but what does the birthright does confer on us? Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 17. There's something the birthright confers, confers on us. Hallelujah. Amen. If one be found, uh, if a man have, sorry, Deuteronomy 21, yeah, okay, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated. Is in well, you read it in context. There's no time to read it in context, but at least we can glean from here. Hated for the uh, of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he had. 
you know, uh, this is a story if a man has a wife and he doesn't like her, and um, the wife gives him a male child, and that male child is the firstborn, that son has the birthright. Mm. What does the son have? Double portion. Double portion. portion. Now, you notice in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, 2 Kings 2, 9, Elijah. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. So in all I ask him, ask for the birthright. Mm. Before I be taken away from, from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. What he wanted was the portion of the firstborn. There is something the firstborn enjoy, and that's the double portion. May God help us in our oppression, in our oppression as sons of God, to operate what? As for sons. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what you get is you get the birthright. You get what? The birthright. Then, now, it's a right. It's a right that must come upon the firstborn. Mm -hmm. It's a right. It must come. It must come. A right of inheritance to all firstborns. How are we firstborns? Now, you are a firstborn by the choices you make in your redemptive work. The choices will make, you make will confer on you a firstborn right. As Esau made a choice and lost it. Mm. Jacob made a choice and got it. Now, as we run this race, brethren, as we run the race, yes, we are born again. Now, the firstborn you can, you know, look at it as those who will be partakers of the first fruit company, the first to ripen, the first to ripen. You know, once you maybe you plant any fruit and or you know any tree that bears fruit, th those first fruits is called first fruit. Those are firstborn, the first fruits. The first fruits are unto God. Amen. Yeah. But mind you. Jesus is the first to uh, resurrect from the dead. Amen. He's the first. So, it's also a right. We, with Christ, will resurrect as first fruit company. As he rose, we identify with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There is a first resurrection, and there are other resurrections. I don't know how many, but at least there's a second resurrection. Amen. Amen. So our goal is that Jesus said, blessed is he yes. that takes part what? In the first, in the first resurrection. That's the, 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 the brother or the sister with the double portion. Amen. That's the brother or the sister who has the right of the firstborn. Hallelujah. Who has the right of inheritance. Because these are the ones, why do we need that right? It's an inheritance where we sit with Christ and reign with him and judge the 12 tribes of Israel, and judge the world, and judge angel, angels. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. And you will enjoy the bounties of Christ Amen. far more than others. May God help us in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. There's no time to go into that. But as we walk this journey, there are challenges. Challenges to life. And what are those challenges? You can see those challenges in creation. And we can take it from the book of Genesis, chapter 8. Genesis, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Genesis, chapter 8. And these are the challenges we must fight to overcome. Now, we are studying the book of Revelation. You all know that every Thursday. And to the churches, it says, to him that overcome it, will I give. To him that overcome it, will I give. 
Now, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, he says, While the earth remained, as long as you have this world, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. It's the Lord. Brethren, it's the law of life. It's not the law of spiritual life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. There are other laws. These are laws of life, 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 as we live. When, today is daytime. You will sleep tonight. Tomorrow it will be another daytime. There will be day and night. There will be day and there will be night. There will be summer and there will be winter. There will be seed time and there will be harvest. But where we are very particular is seed time. And harvest seed time and harvest seed time and harvest because Jesus is the incorruptible seed we know from the scriptures whatsoever a man soweth that he will reap but we are very particular about th th that, that seed that seed that incorruptible seed and that seed is Christ amen, amen. praise the name of the Lord that seed is Christ it says, as the earth remained, seed time and harvest. We'll talk about that. But let's go to cold and heat. Seed time and harvest is a must. Whatever you sow, you reap. But we are particular about that seed that you and I have received. That seed that is incorruptible. That seed that is Christ himself. Amen. It's incorruptible. That seed will grow, will grow us into fullness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it tells you of the seed time and the harvest, which is for believers, for everyone who are believers. When I say who walk in the way I've described it, that is having the seed of Christ inside. But for the unbeliever, he has the seed, the devil comes and takes it away. That's different. That's not what we are talking about here. Now, there must be harvest. We must grow up into fullness. Because we have Christ. We have the seed of life. We must grow up into fullness. The fullness of Christ. It's a must. The, as long as the earth remained. Now, for that to operate, these are the challenges we must face. And everybody must face it. Why? Go. And heat. The Christian life is not always heat. It's not always heat. These are the complexes we face in life. Cold and heat. Now, high school, sometimes you know you're a believer. You know you're filled with the Holy Spirit. But sometimes you don't feel it. You don't feel it. You come, you want to pray, you strive. As long as the earth remained, there will be what? Cold and heat. Those put uh, Genesis 1 14. I think Genesis 1 14. It says, And God said, Let there be light. I just want to use this simple example. Light in the family. Light. Light. We are the light of the heaven to divide the day from the night. It was prophetic. We would divide the day from the night. It is given to us to divide it. The day from the night. And let them be what? For signs. So the day and the night are what? For signs. And for seasons. And for days. And for years. Now, when you are feeling, you don't feel it. I'm feeling, you know, let me give an example of me today. You know, yesterday I wasn't sure I would be here. I told the brother, I said, Look, I, the way I'm feeling, I'm, I, I've been trying to pray, the word is not even coming. Yes. Uh, this morning, I, I said, No, 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 I can't be living like this. In the morning, I came down. <laughs> left my, I began to pray in tongues. That's how, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is it. 
cold and heat. Mm -hmm. You must generate that heat. Mm -hmm. If you allow that cold, you will be cool. Yes. Much worry cold. <laughs> as long as the earth remains, yes. these are the things you must overcome as long as you are The earth remains cold and heat. They will not cease. But when you notice that cold, what do you do? They are for science. Gives you science. No, I won't allow this cold. I won't allow this cold. I won't allow this cold. It's your chance. Don't fall weak. You feel you feel not feel like praying, and you don't feel like praying. Ah! You there must be a will to stand up. You know why? Jesus said it. He said the spirit is willing. Inside you, there's always a willingness. He said, "What the flesh is." You can't, you can't change it. As long as you have the flesh, it's weak. The flesh will tell you, ah, "Don't nah, you relax? You relax." But obey the spirit. As many as are led, are what the sons of led by the spirit of God. So you must arrive. Look, listen. You might be going through your cold. Change it to heat immediately. If you can do it in your car, it's cold. It's cold. Yeah. Turn it. Turn it. Turn that dial in your heart. Turn it to heat. In the name of Jesus. As we go into 2024, oh no, Lord help me to stay warm. Be on fire for you. Will cold not attempt to come? It will come. Cold can come, bright. just a word. Somebody speak a word, you get discouraged. That's yeah. cold. Yeah. You wake up. This is life, brethren. Welcome to life. <laughs> but, he says, cold and heat. Summer, winter, not only time, your bank account is always loaded. Summer. It's summertime. It's summertime. Hallelujah. But well, sometimes winter wants to creep in. Reject it. Fight it. How? How? <laughs> By the word. Amen. Remember, we said that um, when we were talking about praise, they, they all line up. You know, when we're talking about praise, it says, um, who satisfied Psalm 103 verse 5? Hallelujah. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things? So your mouth is loaded what? So that what will happen? There's a renewal. It means that sometimes you feel you, you, you are feeling old in yourself. If you feel old and you see, I'm about 65 now. If I want to be living like old, I'll live old. God forbid it. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else. Maybe The Lord will not even allow it. <laughs> Somebody told me in the office many years ago. Then I was younger. He said, Old oh, age is not good. Old oh, age is not good. God, so many things begin to creep. So I said, No way. You see? There were people who are old in scripture. They were not sinner. They were people who praised the Lord. Abraham was old. He was not sinner. Caleb. Moses. It's not a time to be sinner. To be complaining. Vex grum, 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 grumbling. You grumble. This thing, sir. Or you just keep grumbling. You, 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 no man grumble. I'm now alone. I'm this. My children are not calling me. This. You just keep telling me so many things. So this, this, so this, this. The brethren don't love me. I've not had a visit. You no, know, all those kind of things. This sickness. I'm got grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. He says, let no corrupt word proceed from your mouth. Let Ephesians 4.29 May God help us Amen. to obey that word. Proceed 
from your mouth, but rather what is good. What is good in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Back to Genesis chapter. We'll soon close. I want to close. We have not even gone one tenth of the message, but we'll stop there with time. It says, while the earth remained, seed time and harvest. That's where we wanted to talk about, but maybe next week we'll continue. Cold and heat. Hmm. Summer and winter. Please. Don't allow the winter times. You know, winter comes to the world. Summer comes to the world. But if you are not properly clothed, you will suffer in the winter. So it matters the clothing. Christ is our clothing. And as we are clothed with him, we'll be warm for the winter. Winter, the element, you will not be subject to the elements. Amen. Because there are principles of life. Summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. It shall, you can't whip it away. It will not cease. But you take advantage of the day. When you take advantage of the day, him who is light even in the night. You remember, our brother mentioned when the Lord uh, put, uh, what's that thing? The Israelites were crossing the Red Sea. He put the clouds. The clouds. You know, to the Egyptians, what was it? It was darkness. To the what? Israelites, what was it? It was light. So we can come into that estate where we live in his presence. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, the thought this morning is to come into his rest and to stay there. He said, them that be have entered into the rest. Them that believe. Hallelujah. I would, let me, the spirit of the problem is subject, let me stop there. Mm. You know. Um, um, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Brethren, because we believe, we have entered into the rest. Although there's a provision. And that was the provision I just dealt with in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. He said, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Lest any man should fall after the same example of unbelief. If winter comes and you don't believe, you will fall. If night comes, you don't believe, you will fall. Now, the two kinds of persons who build their house, one on the rock, one on the sand, they all had the same word, challenges. But the house on the rock stood firm. So don't say, night will not come. Night comes. But how would you handle night? Don't say, winter will not come. It will come. How would you? He said, as long as the earth remained. But that is why the Lord has made us kings and priests. Amen. To rule over the things. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath. Oh, yes. I have sworn. God swore. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. What works? That Jesus died. That he was buried. That he resurrected. It's all about Jesus. These works have been uh, finished from the foundation. All you and I need to do is to believe it. Brethren, we will ride into the coming year 2024. Much so, much so, seed time and harvest. We'll talk about that hopefully next week. Seed time. How to nurture the seed time. How to nurture the harvest. Praise the name of the Lord. Because in you already, there's a seed. That seed is the seed of Christ. 
that seed that will crush Satan under your feet. That seed that is incorruptible, and that seed is Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You have the victory. Yes. You have the dominion. You have everything to make you an overcomer. Amen. May God help us Amen. to walk in the light of our calling. Amen. In Jesus' name. Shall we begin to pray? Begin to pray.